ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम नरेश मागो द हेडलाइंस एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर एस जयशंकर सेज इंडिया विल ट्राई टू बिल्ड कंसेंसिस ऑन ग्लोबल इश्यूज इंक्लूडिंग यूक्रेन ज्यूरिंग इट्स जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी India assumes presidency of UN Security Council for the month of December. GST collections rise by 11% year on year to over 1.45 lakh crore rupees in November. Government advises FM radio channels not to broadcast content glorifying alcohol, drugs, weaponry, gangsters and gun culture. And in FIFA World Cup Japan beats Spain to reach last 16. Germany crash out of the tournament despite a 4-2 win over Costa Rica. External Affairs Minister S Jay Shankar has said that India will try to build consensus on global issues including Ukraine during its G20 presidency. He said India's endeavor will be to create a consensus through consultation on key global issues. India yesterday formally assumed the presidency of G20 grouping for a period of 1 year to mark the first day of India's presidency a special event titled G20 University Connect Engaging Young Minds was organized in New Delhi which virtually brought together students from 75 universities across the country addressing the event dr jay shankar said india will look to emerge as the voice of the global south comprising asia africa and latin america that has had to face the brunt of polarization and conflict in the developed world he said india will flag concerns on issues such as energy security food security access to healthcare climate action and climate justice during its g20 presidency the g20 presidency offers an opportunity to share our story with others and it is also a time when we must become the voice of the global south that is otherwise underrepresented in such forums countries of asia africa and latin america trust india to speak up for them dr jay shankar said india's g20 presidency it is taking place at a very critical moment in international affairs It is particularly vital that world leaders focus on the right issues especially those that affect the more vulnerable sections of the world he said Dr Jay Shankar highlighted that harmonizing diverse interests is something that has been deeply ingrained in India's history and culture India's example is of increasing relevance to the rest of the world whether it is our last mile delivery done using digital platforms a way of responding to the covid and other public health challenges or indeed the transformation in green and clean energy that we have seen in the last few years there are very good reasons why today the world is taking a much deeper interest in us The G20 is an intergovernmental forum of the world's 20 major developed and developing economies making it the premier forum for international economic cooperation. India has assumed the presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of December. It is the second time in its two-year tenure as an elected member of the UN Security Council that India has assumed the presidency of the council. India had earlier assumed the presidency of the UNSC in August 2021. Briefing the media in New York, permanent representative of India to the United Nations, Ruchira Kambod said during India's December presidency of the UN Security Council, two high-level signature events will take place on 14th and 15th December on reformed multilateralism and counterterrorism. The External Affairs Minister of India, Dr. S. J. Shankar, will chair an open debate of the Security Council on 14th December, which we hope will encourage member states to exchange ideas on key issues, specifically how to inject new life into multilateralism in order to ensure that the tools we have today are adequate to address the challenges of the future. She said a bust of Mahatma Gandhi will be inaugurated at the United Nations during India's presidency of the UN Security Council.
Two side events coinciding with India's presidency. The first would mark the arrival of Mahatma Gandhi at the United Nations on 14 December as a simple ceremony. The Secretary General and the External Affairs Minister of India will inaugurate a bust of Gandhiji, which is to be placed in the prestigious North Lawns of the UN building. Needless to add, the event will take place in the presence of council members, including the five incoming members of the Security Council or the I-5. In Gujarat, the campaigning for the second and final phase of polls has reached its peak after the end of the first phase of polls. All the top leaders are making all-out efforts to woo the voters as campaigning will come to an end tomorrow. A total of 833 candidates are in the fray in the second and final phase in the state. Top BJP leader and Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Union Home Minister Amit Shah will address rallies at various places today, including Ahmedabad. A report. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is to address four rallies, including one in Ahmedabad. Union Home Minister Amit Shah will also address election rallies and conduct road show at multiple places. Union Minister Smriti Irani, Purushottam Rupala and Gajendra Singh Shekhawat will address election rallies. Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man will take part in four road shows today. Several senior Congress leaders are also going to campaign for their party candidates. The second phase of polls will cover 14 districts of Central and North Gujarat, including Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. With Aparna Khun, this is Manas Patim Sharma, AR News, Ahmedabad. Polling was completed peacefully yesterday for the first phase of Gujarat Assembly elections. Over 60% voting was recorded. Polling was held for 89 constituencies spread over 19 districts of Saurashtra, Kutch and South Gujarat. A total of 788 candidates are in the fray in the first phase. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The Gross Goods and Services Tax GST revenue collection in the last month was over 1,45,000 crore rupees. This is the straight ninth month when the monthly GST revenue collection is more than 1,40,000 crore rupees. The Finance Ministry said GST revenue collection in the month of November 2022 has registered a growth of 11% in comparison to the corresponding month of last year. He said more than 1,31,000 crore rupees worth of GST collection was made in November 2021. The ministry said a total of 25,681 crore rupees were collected as central goods and services tax and 32,651 crore rupees as state goods and services tax SGST last month. Over 77 crore rupees were collected as integrated goods and services tax IGST and over 10,000 crore rupees as SES. He said the centre released 17,000 crore rupees as GST compensation to states and union territories in November 2022. Centre asked FM radio channels not to play songs or broadcast content glorifying alcohol, drugs, weaponry, gangsters and gun culture. The Information and Broadcasting Ministry said in an advisory that the broadcast of such songs or content is in violation of the AIR program code. It said, Grant of Permission Agreement, GOPA, provides that the permission holder shall follow the same program and advertisement codes as followed by All India Radio. The advisory stated that any violation shall entail penal action in accordance with the terms and conditions laid down in the GOPA. It says such content affects children of impressionable age and gives rise to the culture of gangsters. Union Minister of Tourism, Culture and Development of Northeastern Region G. Kishan Reddy and Bangladesh Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. A. K. Abdul Momin will inaugurate the Silhet Festival 2022 at Silchar in the Barak Valley of Assam today. State Chief Minister Himant Biswa Sarma, Mizoram Governor K. Hari Babu and Assam Cultural Affairs Minister Bimal Bora are also expected to be attending the five-day festival which is being jointly organized by the Ministry of Cultural Affairs and India Foundation. Around 100 dignitaries from Bangladesh will also join the program. The program is being organized in the context of the historical relation between Silhet and Barak Valley of South Assam. The Indian Coast Guard has rescued four Sri Lankan fishermen who were lost in deep seas for 63 days. This group, which set sail on the 25th of September in a fishing trawler, had gotten close to Kamorta, a tiny island of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. As per reports, the boat developed a technical snag and lost communications. 
Local Andaman fishermen sighted the boat and alerted the Indian Coast Guard, who extended all assistance to the Sri Lankan fishermen and brought them to the Indian shores. Steps have been initiated for early repatriation of the fishermen. China's Vice Premier Sun Chun Lan, who is also the senior most official responsible for its COVID response, has said that the country is facing a new situation in epidemic prevention and control as the lethality of the Omicron virus has weakened. This is seen as a potential hint at a shift from Beijing's zero-COVID strategy, which has sparked days of nationwide protests. This is for the first time that a senior Chinese official has acknowledged the change in the nature of the virus in a softening of the rhetoric on countries' strong COVID-19 control measures. In another step towards tackling a major hurdle in reopening, China has announced a vaccination campaign focused on getting the elderly vaccinated. In the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, Germany beat Costa Rica 4-2 at Albeit Stadium in Alcor in Group E match but failed to qualify for the Round 16 stage as they lag behind Spain on goal difference. In the other Group E match, Japan beat Spain 2-1 at the Khalifa International Stadium and qualified for the Round 16 stage. Earlier, in Group F, Morocco and Croatia qualified for the Round 16 stage while Belgium and Canada are out. Morocco beat Canada 2-1 at the Al Tumama Stadium in their final group stage game. The match between Croatia and Belgium ended in a draw. Here is a report. Two goals from Ritsu Doan and Aotanaka secured another of Japan's historic comebacks in the FIFA World Cup as Japan finished as the topper in the Group E beating Spain by 2-1. Japan had nine men at the back like a fortress, gave no chance to La Roja's strikers to open goal mouth, forcing Spain to try long-range shots, but that too is blocked and cleared by Japan defenders. In another match, Germany failed to progress from their group for the second successive World Cup despite with an entertaining 4-2 win against Costa Rica in concluding Group E match. Earlier, Romelu Lukaku missed a string of late chances as Belgium crashed out of the World Cup in the group stage after a goalless draw with Croatia. However, Morocco advanced to the World Cup knockout stage for the first time since 1986 as they defeated Canada 2-1 to not only qualify for the round of 16 but to win Group F. With Pratyush Ghosh, this is Anupam Mish, AI News, Sports Desk. <laughs> Today, South Korea will take on Portugal at 8.30 p.m. at Education City Stadium, while Ghana will lock horns with Uruguay at 8.30 p.m. at Al Janoub Stadium. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to you, Sarabjit Kaur. Thank you, Naresh. A front-page headline of Hindustan Times says, India takes helm of G20, quoting Prime Minister Narendra Modi as saying, India's G20 presidency will work to further promote oneness inspired by one earth, one family, one future. India replied to China, no third party gets veto on our military exercise, asks Beijing to review its breach of agreements, says the Times of India. Verdict sealed for 89 seats in Gujarat's high stakes phase 1, reports the Hindustan Times. Facial recognition-based entry in Delhi, Bengaluru and Varanasi airports, reports the statesman. The Economic Times writes, November GST mop-up rises 11% factory PMI at three-month high. China set to ease zero COVID rules after wave of protests, writes the Times of India. Pakistan terror groups now shifting base to Afghanistan, says former security chief, reads a headline in the Hindu. Aap's Nair received 100 crore rupee kickbacks, ED tells Special Court, writes the Tribune. And finally, alongside a picture of England cricketers Ben Duckett and Zach Crawley, Hindustan Times says, England smashed 506, setting a new record for most runs on the first day of a test in modern cricket. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar says India will try to build consensus on global issues including Ukraine during its G20 presidency. India assumes presidency of UN Security Council for the month of December. GST collections rise by 11% year-on-year to over 1.45 lakh crore rupees in November. 
government advises fm radio channels not to broadcast content glorifying alcohol drugs weaponry gangsters and gun culture and in fifa world cup japan beat spain to reach last 16 germany crashed out of the tournament despite a 4-2 win over costa rica and with that we end the morning news have a nice day